Hello and thank you for downloading Witness from the BBC World Service. It's 35 years since the premiere of one of the biggest movies of all time, Star Wars. Simon Watts has been talking to the man who played one of the stars of the film, the robot C-3PO. It's the mid-1970s and Anthony Daniels, a classically trained British actor, is offered some Hollywood film work. Got a call from my agent about this American who I'd never heard of called George Lucas, who was casting a weird, silly sci-fi movie. There's no budget and it was the part of a robot. I wasn't into science fiction, so the pause was dramatic enough for her to then say, I do think you should go and see him. I mean, why would I want to do that? But she convinced me that you shouldn't turn down an idea because you never knew what it would lead to. George Lucas was in England to make an epic sci-fi film on a low budget. Inspired by the cowboy movies he'd seen as a kid, the director wanted a fable of good and evil for the late 20th century. It was so obvious that westerns were an American form of mythology. The stories and the way the heroes were created and everything, especially for kids in the 50s, we grew up with this sense of heroes and friendship and trust. I was looking at it and saying, gee, that has all fallen away. I wonder how you could create another genre of this kind of thing. And obviously, the easiest and most direct choice was science fiction, because that is the last frontier, so to speak. Star Wars would have human heroes like Luke Skywalker, hairy aliens called Wookiees, and talking robots like C-3PO. Initially, Anthony Daniels was sceptical, but then he saw what his robot, or droid, would look like. Around the walls of the, the office were uh, what they called, I learnt, um, concept drawings, paintings. Concepts of how characters and scenes might look in a film if it was ever made. So that you had a planet, you had strange vehicles. And then there was this strange metal figure standing on this empty landscape with a box of tricks by its side. And I looked into the face, the eyes of this character, and he looked back at me, or it looked back at me. It was as though we were magnetically drawn to each other. It was a man, man-like machine. He's almost on the edge of knowing what it is to be human, but he can't ever make that last little leap. Daniels liked the robot, and George Lucas appeared to like Daniels, so he got the job. Within days, he was being fitted for C-3PO's gold metal costume. He looked like a rusty, battered version of the iconic robot in Fritz Lang's Metropolis. This costume looked stunning from the outside, but was almost completely inoperable. And I was inside it, almost like I was a sardine in a can, but too big for the can, and the can was... And you know how those frightening edges of a sardine can? Well, all sorts of bits of the costume were as sharp as that. It was the hottest summer in history in England, 1976. And for me, that was incredible torture, because not only was the studio baking hot, not only have you got huge lights creating heat, but I was locked in this can that I would come out lobster red. It was so difficult to get on and off that I would stand the whole day. It was day after day after day torture. The awkward costume helped Daniels play his part of a super polite robot servant. He made C-3PO sound like a prissy English butler, uncomfortable in the middle of a fight for the galaxy. The brilliant thing in in George's script was that he had created a protocol droid, a machine for the well-functioning of society, the serving of canopies and cocktails, manners. Even doing his voice, he's very uptight. Hello, I am C-3PO, human cyborg relations, and uh, this is my counterpart, R2-D2. I'm frightfully sorry. All that kind of thing. Uh, the, the brilliance is to, to put this character out of his class, out of his depth, and to give him a cohort, a companion, R2-D2, totally the other way around. You know, R2-D2 is a plumber. <laughs> that doesn't go together. Uh, but it's great scope for dramatic irony, uh, dramatic conflict, and so on. 
The brilliance may be obvious now, but during filming, the actors were deeply unsure about Star Wars. Unable to imagine the special effects and music, they found the script very weird. It was very clear early on just how odd all of us found the script. Right, sir, my first job was programming binary load lifters, very similar to evaporators in many respects. Moisture evaporators, binary load lifters. This isn't Shakespeare, this isn't Stoppard, this isn't any known cultural phenomenon. Harrison Ford is famous for saying, you know, George, you can write this, but you can't say it. So we did it professionally. That's all I can say. We struggled through it. Did you think you were working on a hit? At no point. None of us thought this film would work. But when Star Wars came out in May 1977, it quickly became one of the biggest films of all time. In London, there were long queues to get in. The prestige of being able to say you've seen Star Wars is something akin to royalty, really. <laughs> Whoever wrote it had a fantastic imagination. Fantastic. But I didn't like the bit when the man chopped off the person's arm, because there was blood. The C-3PO robot was one of the stars of the film. But George Lucas had originally intended to replace Anthony Daniels' voice with an American actor playing the robot like a New York car dealer. My agent said, you know, they want you to go over to uh, Los Angeles to put your voice on the film. And literally, I walked into the sound producer's stage on Highland Avenue, and um, the engineer was there. And he said, oh, hi, you, are you, are you're Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's great to meet you, you know. She's kind of amazing you got here because we spent a couple of months trying to find a voice for your character. I was actually shocked. And I looked at George and said, you, you hated my performance. What had happened was that he'd had people like Richard Dreyfus coming in, looking at me on the screen, my performance, and, um, you know, trying to you know, put a voice on it. It's what we do. Um, and nothing quite gelled. And one of them said, um, finally... You know, George, uh, nothing wrong with Anthony's voice. Pretty good. And George had the uh, generosity, the courage, whatever, to go, OK, I'll change my mind. Anthony Daniels went on to play C-3PO in all the Star Wars films, and he's now a sort of unofficial spokesman for the series. Really, it is George Lucas's genius in combining all sorts of elements from ancient and modern storytelling, all sorts of fairy stories and myths, and there is something absolutely deep-seated and atavistic in George's storyline. And then he did a, you know, the very clever thing of putting it far, far away. So it's like any fantasy film, it takes people out of themselves. They like the big Wookiee thing, they like the funky princess, they love the uh, space pirate uh, Han Solo, and the, the kid was cute and all that. And then you had these droids, you know, weird stuff, but fun. What's your relationship like now with C-3PO? Has he taken over your life? I think he has uh, taken over my life, and to a great extent has my total joy. You see, the enjoyment I get from people saying, are you 3PO? Would you save something to my kid because he doesn't believe you? That's a magic thing, you know. And I say to a little child, does he sound like this? Hello, I... And you see the sound go in their ears, then go through their brain, and as it comes out the other side, they smile. They get it. It's really good. <laughs> C-3PO, thank you very much, or should I say, may the force be with you. Yes, but you have to say it in the right way. Um, <laughs> it has indeed been a pleasure, and uh, may the force be with you, always. C-3PO ending Witness from Simon Watts. For details of our complete range of downloads and our terms of use, go to bbcworldservice.com slash podcasts.